to say there's going to be change at Manchester United this summer really is the understatement of the century. It's going to be an unprecedented, it already sort of is, an unprecedented summer of change. And so much more is coming. Really hard to keep on top of everything that's going on at this club. Every single day, something else seems to be happening. What I'm going to do in this video is run through an excellent article that's come out today from James Ducker from The Telegraph that will hopefully give us a bit of insight into what's going on behind the scenes with Richard Arnold, with John Murto, with the recruitment and with everything that's being prepared behind the scenes to create the conditions for Eric Ten Hag to succeed at the club. If you do learn something by the end of the video, make sure you stick around. This will be an important one and a good one, I think. So make sure you do subscribe. If you do learn something by the end of it, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. Become part of the United People's TV community. What I will do as well is leave the link to the full article from James Ducker in the description if you do want to read that yourself. But let's dive into this because there really are so many different talking points from it. It's one of the most in-depth articles we'll probably see this summer. Revealed the secrets of Manchester United's great summer rebuild. It goes on there to sort of start talking about, you know, the problems that have happened at Manchester United, everything pointing back towards the Glazers and this idea of a survivor culture. And it's sort of broken down into two things here, two problems. One centers around some, but by no means all of the legacy staff who are all set in their ways and think the old rules still apply at a club. I mean, we've known that for a long time. People who are empowered, people who are entitled, the same sort of thing applies to players. Entitlement, the, the, the thinking that you haven't got to work hard and change that. But it's this second one here, which I suppose will strike the fear into United fans. And it's, the, it's not really a fear. It's kind of what we've always known, right? It's, it's one of our biggest problems with the club. The other and the much more corrosive problem re revolves around what sources have described as the fear of speaking up. Those who have been prepared to stick their head above the parapet have found too often themselves shot down, sidelined, or worse still, ignored. Over time, it has encouraged a culture of silence, obedience, and disillusionment. Now, there's one thing, I, there's one place I will point to there straight away. Hmm. Ralph Radnick, a person who, quote unquote, stuck his head above the parapet too often, all of a sudden has left the club. Now, I do think that's a, a largely in part due to the fact that Eric Ten Hag didn't want him at the club, but he didn't have any support really inside that board. It's probably why that role was never clarified. And that is such a huge issue. Corrosive issue is what James Ducker calls it. It's a very good way to describe it. Uh, and this is more from the source here. I said, you'd hear of technical board meetings where the minute someone criticizes recruitment, they get ostracized. So is any wonder people have been shit scared of speaking up? It's such a... <sighs> Corrosive is the best way to describe that sort of approach. It's bad management. It's horrendous management. You have to be able to empower people to speak up, to create the culture that allows your team, the whole team, working team, football team, any team to succeed together. It doesn't exist at United and it has to change. And that's the thing that Richard Arnold and John Murto are trying to change, according to this. Uh, the irony is that United's so basically saying, look, the irony is that after all of this, it's going to be Richard Arnold that's leading it. A man who, let's be completely honest, we've got a natural position as a United fan to distrust this man. And it's not unreasonable to have that. Because he's, a, he's a, another relic of the... Not the relic of the Glazers. The Glazers are right there. But we all fear that he's Woodward Part 2. So that natural position of pessimism exists with Richard Arnold. But this is what they're saying here. It has felt like a hurricane coming in. It is understood that internationally renowned organizational consulting giants, that's a hell of a sentence, Vaughan Ferry have been enlisted to lead an aggressive headhunting process to identify the best in class. We've heard that before, Gary Neville's favorite three words. As part of that process, existing employees are finding themselves subjected to thorough interviews. You have to, you have to look in, in house first. Um, talking about Richard Arnold here, a fiercely demand, demanding individual with no interest in the spotlight like Woodward had. I go down here and he says that he's hell-bent on ensuring that United, first and foremost, have a best-in-class culture across the club and wants dynamic department heads who feel empowered. If you're looking at PR talk, that there sort of feels like PR talk. I will remain... If... I don't know how to describe my feelings towards Richard Arnold. As I said, I've come from a completely naturally pessimistic point of view that he's just going to be another one of those Glazer Stooges. 
But the proof is in the pudding. And ultimately, it will be this man who we judge it all on, really. John Murto. John Murto and his relationship with Eric Ten Hag is going to be far closer than Ed Wood would have with any manager before. Not simply because he literally is going to be closer and working in Carrington far more than anything that Woodward did. But let's run through what this article says about John Murto, because this, I think, is the real crux of it all. And effectively, any true change at Manchester United, it relies more on the success of John Murto than it does rely on the success of Richard Arnold. That's what I think so anyway. They're going down here and they're calling him the fixer. Anybody ever watch, uh, what's it called, Ray... Damn, I forgot the name of the series now. Ray what? Ray Donovan. Yeah, big up Ray Donovan. I think they cancelled the last series. Damn it. Bastards. Anyway, back to here. The fixer turned football director. Although Murto was appointed football director 15 months ago, uh, blah, blah, blah. He led the search for Ten Hag. His power base only truly began to widen once Woodward, the arsehole, left the club. Described as United's fixer, Murto is aware of the accusations leveled at him. Principally that he is an administrator able administrator, sorry, but not a sporting director with a skill set and expertise to overhaul recruitment. And that, again, that I think is a fair position of pessimism that every United fan is allowed to have. John Murto's come into the club. And if you're looking at best in class, not John Murto, it's somebody who we are allowing to learn on the job again. And that's, again, why we have that natural position of pessimism that we ultimately think he's going to fail because we've had no real, as United fans, we've had no real evidence in the last, uh, well, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight, nine years of anybody inside the club doing their job properly. History, recent history tells us they will fail. And that is why we all sort of felt that when John Murto was appointed. But I have to admit that a lot of good things seem to be happening under John Murto and have happened under John Murto. Let's run through a few of them here. Been called affable and approachable, isn't that nice? Murto is not somebody who shouts and screams, but there have been signs that he is unafraid to put noses out of joint and points here towards Jim Lawler, points towards Marcel Bout. And I've spoken about those two. I think that was a very good thing that he did. It was a necessary thing that he did. I still think more is needed in terms of change in our recruitment department. But Jim Lawler and Marcel Bout leaving after what was it like combined 30 years between them? That was a good, in, in my opinion, a good indicator of that real change that was and needs to happen. A source close to Murto said he doesn't want to be sat there in a few years thinking about the things he should have done and didn't. And that's something I've said in quite a few times. Whether you're John Murto, whether you're Richard Arnold, it's not hard to look at what Edward Wood did right. And that's the early doors commercial stuff that he increased the revenue. And what he did wrong, and that list is endless. You have a perfect example of how not to do it right in front of you. Staying in the shadows, not taking in the limelight. However you want to approach it. Murto and Arnold have to do the complete fucking opposite of what Woodward did at the club and how he dragged us down. Uh, going down here and saying, look, the power th flows through him at United's Carrington training base now, where his presence in close proximity to the manager and recruitment staff is welcomed. Woodward only spent 20% of his time there. Murto will need to let uh, Murto will sorry will need Ten Hag to work out a lot better than Ralph Ragnick, whose appointment as interim manager he had championed in the wake of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's sacking. Now the, the Ragnick thing, I'm going to get into it a bit. I'm going to speak to Guido. I'm going to try and find out a bit more information about what happened behind the scenes with Ralph. I don't like it. I think it stinks. I don't think again it's one of those situations where, in my opinion, I don't think anybody wins. It's like that Jesse Lingard situation. I don't think anybody won in that. United looked bad, Lingard looked bad, everybody looked bad. In this one, I think everyone looks bad again. So I want to find out a bit more information. But we go down here, and this is an important part here, because you can speak about John Murto. You can speak about the, the, the success of getting rid of so many former employees who were part of that, as James Ducker described, that first sort of problem of just the existing employees thinking they know it all. Realistically, they're way past it. We need more to work with John Murto. He's very thinly spread. And that's what I think here. And that's the first thing that James Ducker said there. With, with as many as nine direct reports into him, there have been concerns in some areas that Murta has been too thinly spread. And I think so as well. Unlike traditional directors of football, whose role tends to focus on the transfer window and player negotiations, Murto's remit has extended far and wide to include infrastructure, facilities, staffing, and the women's team, let alone the first team and recruitment. He 
is not well it's, it's impossible it's an impossible amount of jobs for somebody to do on their own so more change is needed for our structure to work properly if John Murto is to be a success at the club and you go down here and it's about that di deputy director of football Andy O'Boyle uh, and they're saying that he's going to come in and remove much of the day bureaucracy and this is quite an interesting point here it will allow John Murto to narrow his focus on the first team and recruitment so if Andy O'Boyle comes in that gives us the clarity there on what John Murto's role will be narrowed down to recruitment and first team anything else will go down towards Andy O'Boyle so that he effectively John Murto is going to turn into our Paul Mitchell if you want to call it that our head of recruitment our person who will be leading the negotiations, our person maybe not identifying the targets, that's going to be going to like Steve Brown, and, and I'm going to get down into the recruitment in a little bit. As I said, it's a very in-depth article. It's worth reading in full yourself. But Murto is going to be our man to hopefully spearhead this transformation of recruitment. That fills me with a bit of fear. I'll be, I've got to be completely honest, no matter how good he is. Uh, Murto has spent a lot of time in recent weeks traveling around Europe, meeting counterparts at rival clubs again. Learning on the job, but learning, I suppose, have to learn somewhere, right? Just learning at Manchester United. A bit odd. It is a, it, it is a bit odd. But in this situation, I suppose, I have to, I have to try and give John Murta the, the benefit of the doubt. What he's done since November, I've been quietly impressed with. But this summer, by the start of the season on the 6th of August, we'll know whether or not John Murto is able to deliver. We can't get this summer wrong. We really can't. Talking about Darren Fletcher's role being more clarified. I've said that quite a lot. He's just been, you can't just be on the sidelines shouting and getting booked next to Randick and then being a technical director who's sitting next to Ten Hag interviewing our new managers. It's wrong. He's got to be more clarified on that role. But more changes are still afoot. We go down here and we see this. It says, look, Simon Wells, Mick Court and Jose Mayorga are senior scouts and the setup is being coordinated coordinated by Steve Brown. I may do a separate video on this part because recruitment in itself is such a big, big talking point. That's why we can't just have this man leading it on his own. He needs a support network around him. We need to make the right signings. If we don't get recruitment right, it doesn't matter about any of these changes. It doesn't matter about Eric Ten Hag. If we don't bring the right players in, we're not going to get out of this cycle. So I'm probably going to brush over the recruitment a little bit because I want to deep dive into that a bit more, but it's going to be Steve Brown leading it there. He doesn't give an opinion on players, but seeks to ensure there is a robust process and that targets are watched. Jeez, was Steve Brown involved in us watching 800 right backs before we signed that bloke? I don't know about that. Uh, we go down here and we see this. Ten Hag has already met the recruitment staff and fed in what he wants, and Murto is there to provide a challenge. And only when he and the manager ultimately align will deals be progressed. We go down here, and again, this, this goes into what I was saying about John Murto's hour fear well, power what i don't know just how much power he's got murto will be taking on the responsibility of handling the high profile and sensitive negotiations and that will be replacing matt judge so we aren't going to be getting in any paul mitchell character we're not going to be getting anybody who's going to be a recruitment guru we are basically allowing this man to succeed or fail could he become our michael edwards that liverpool had one of those people who really did spearhead such huge change at that club. I hope so. I have to hope so because it's going to be him. But the natural pessimistic part of me, just like the natural pessimistic part of you as a United fan, would expect this man to fail. Would expect this man to fail as well. Because recent history under the Glazers tells us that that is the case. And then it goes down to there. Right at the end of the article from James Ducker, the Florida question. And we know what the Florida question is. It's all about the Glazers. And insiders say Arnold and Murto want to create an environment where people are encouraged to challenge again, but they in turn will need to be free to operate without one hand tied behind their back. And it's the fucking Glazers who tie that hand. And ultimately, this whole article, everything that's written inside this about John Murto, about Richard Arnold, about the changes at the club, about the secrets of Manchester United's great summer rebuild, all of this will be meaningless if the Glazers don't stop micromanaging. It will all be meaningless if this man doesn't 
fulfill on these promises of delegation and let people do their job properly. If this man, John Murto, doesn't succeed in what he's doing, there's so many things that have to go right this summer for it to be a good season next season and a good few years under Eric Ten Hag. So much change has happened. So much change still will happen. And so many question marks at United still. And that article there, as I said, from James Ducker, follow the link in the description if you want to read the whole of it. It's a very insightful and in-depth look at what's happening behind the scenes. And why we've got reason to be positive, in my opinion, about all this change that's been needed for years and years and years. Finally, every, su every summer last few years, you've, you, you know what you would have hoped for in the transfer market, but ultimately you're like, well, United, man, we're probably going to screw it up. And we have screwed it up. And we have gone into a season. I mean, look, look last season we all thought, oh, look, Rand, Sancho, and Ronaldo, but we were all like, really? That midfielder? What happened? Everything collapsed. Not just because of, because of the midfielder, but now things are changing. Now things really are changing, man. And it's about time, seriously. I'm bored of being a laughing stock. I really am. Whether Murto is successful, we'll find out. We'll know by the end of the summer. Whether Arnold is successful, basically relies on Murto being successful. They're both very much intertwined. And whether Ten Hag has the ability to, su to succeed at Manchester United will all revolve around what happens this summer. So it's all on John Murto. It really is. But I thought that was quite a fascinating article. It was, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you did learn something. As I said, if you want to read the full one, the link is in the description. It's worth going behind the paywall. Sort of journalism like this. The same with The Athletic as well. I've got subscriptions to both. But look, you can let me know what you think about this in the comments below about this rebuild that's happening behind the scenes. How much faith do you have in John Murto? How much faith do you have in Richard Arnold, if any? You let me know what you think. The comments is yours. Take it easy.